1909, Andrew Carnegie commissioned an investigation of the quality of medical education here in the U.S. He felt that um, he wanted to help advance medical education. He hired a guy named Flexner, who did an exhaustive study of what was going on in medical schools around the country. And each school had its own curriculum. There were no standards. And Flexner you know, put together this report, which uh, came out in, I believe it was 1909. And this led to a, an, an evolutionary change in the quality of medical education here in the US, most of it for the better. But there was a downside to Flexner's report because Flexner felt it was important that the physician and medicine be practiced more scientifically. He you know, made a declaration that, well, the only field of science that's valid is the field of chemistry. Because you now chemistry had been around since the early 1800s, and chemists had learned how to synthesize different products and had you know, created medications. And so physicians abandoned anything that could not be explained by science and embraced treatment that was based on chemistry. This is how the whole pharmaceutical industry gained a foothold. Because at the time of Flexner, uh, there were lots of traditional healing methods that had been brought from immigrants from other countries that were being used. But they were considered folk medicine because there was no scientific understanding of how they worked, the laying on of hands, um, fasting, um, different kinds of diets with excluding certain foods. Chiropractic, which was growing at the time, was forced aside by medicine and repressed because of the Flexner Report because it was viewed that what the chiropractor was doing by adjusting the bones of the body had no scientific basis because it didn't fit into the paradigm of the time. Fast forward 100 years later, now we know so much more about the nature of the universe and the nature of the world we live in, the nature of biological organisms. Now, everything is energetic. Biological systems work by drawing energy through air, food, and water, and we maintain our health by maintaining the integrity of these energetic biochemical pathways that help to sustain our cells and our health and our vitality. We've learned so much about the immune system We've learned about bacteriology and toxicology and so many other fields of study that when we look at it all in concert without a prejudice or a bias based on the traditions of the last hundred years, we start to see that there's a different way of looking at healthcare than the way we're practicing today. And you know, you hear about you know, the incidence of cancer and chronic degenerative disease and the rising cost of healthcare in, in our country. And the sad thing about it is it doesn't have to be this way. Now, if we were to make a, take, take a turn towards embracing a, a natural way of approaching our health care and um, integrating these principles and practice that come from tr healing traditions around the globe of keeping the body free of toxins, providing proper nourishment with, with fresh, wholesome foods, um, maintaining structural and energetic balance in the body, living in harmony with our environment. Um, all these things will promote, promote health naturally, promote healing when we remove the obstacles from healing. In holistic dentistry, these are the principles that are employed. Yeah, so we, we seek to um, improve the health of the mouth, the health of the patient, by helping them become more aware of how to live their lives more in harmony with the natural world, as simple as that.